In this video, we're going to make a script for Adobe After Effects. You can follow along and learn to code for yourself. The script will search for a text layer named Replace Me, and it will switch the content of that text layer to be something else. It'll do it for your entire project file. So bear with me as this is just going to be a once through take video. Here we go. Uh, first, I recommend that you have some experience with variables, with functions, with for loops. If you don't, um, please watch a few videos to explain those and then come back over here. I'll be using Visual Studio Code to write my code in. And if you go to the extensions tab, you can search for the Adobe Script Runner. And what this will let you do is it will let you write code here and it will let you run it in After Effects. So if I hit Command Shift P and search for After Effects, then I can run my code in Adobe. Great. All right, let's take a look at our code. So as you can see here at the top, we have a variable and it's, uh, it has the content replace me in it. So we can change this if we want to search for a different text name. But as you can see, that's the text that I want to replace. And then here's the content that I want to replace. So if I run this in After Effects, here we go. If I run this in After Effects, then it will replace all of my text replace me's to say hi there. All right, let's see how this is working. So uh, first I'll start by showing you the search and replace text in comp function that I've written. So pretty obvious what it does. It searches for a text layer named replace me and it swaps out the text content. So in this function, um, for it to run, it needs three things. It needs to know which composition you're going to re be replacing text in. It needs to know the name of the text layer that you want to replace text and what content you want to be replaced. So in this case, hi there. So we pass those three items in. Um, we've set them up here at the top. And uh, so let's just give it a test run here. So here we go. I'm now going to ask this function to run by pasting the function name with all my variables that I put. And let's run it. There we go. Let's change some of the content. Say, like, there we go. Okay. So there we go. It's working. Um, but currently, this only runs on a single composition. Um, we'll later on have it run on multiple compositions. But let's go ahead and break it down. So inside of this single composition, we've asked uh, After Effects to loop through every single layer. So if you're not familiar with for loops, this is generally what they look like. Um, but we this will loop through over and over and do a series of tasks. Um, you can see these are the tasks inside of these semicolons, uh, brackets rather, uh, curly brackets. These are all the tasks that will be done over and over. And we limit the loop to the amount of layers. So it, it will only do this amount of task, uh, these series of tasks um, for each layer in the composition. So right now there's one layer. It'll do all of these things just once. So let's see what it's doing. Um, first, it's looking for the Adobe text property. So what does that mean? Um, that is if you toggle down here, you'll see that there's this text drop down. So that's what it's looking for. Um, uh, sorry, I actually missed this first item here. Um, so first we're setting the, the layer that we're targeting. So we're targeting this comp and now we need to go through every layer. So we set the current layer to be the comp um, dot layer item number one. Um, but I said I because this loop will loop through and set it to one, two, three, four, etc. So it'll go down the list of layers. Okay, um, so now we have a variable for the current layer that it's going to change. And um, we want to make sure that that layer has text on it. So first we'll go and see does it have a property called Adobe Text Properties? And as I mentioned before, that is this right here. So it looks like it does currently, um, so that's good. So if it has it, we can, can move forward. But if it does not have it, then 
it will be equal to null. And in that case, we know there's no text. We can't do anything. We need to skip this item because our code will bug out. So if I go to a shape layer, you can see that there is no text item here. So what this means is if the current layer, if the text property on the current layer does not exist, if it is equal to null, then continue. So continue is a like magic word for like skip this item, continue on to the next item. Um, and how do I know, like what is null, what does that even mean? Um, let's just comment out all this code. So I'll hit um, command and question mark and that will like comment out the code so now this code doesn't do anything at all. So I will just alert the text property in After Effects. So let's move this shape layer to the bottom. Okay, so now it's gonna go loop through all these layers. So let's see how it performs. Let's run it in After Effects. Okay, um, the first time it runs, it gives me this object. So that's great. That means that it did actually, that something exists. And the next time that we run it, it says there is no object, it's null. So that's um, how we know, like we don't wanna move forward. There's no text that exists. The first item there was, the second item there was not. So <clears throat> that's what we're doing here. We're pretty much saying only look at text layers. Okay, the next item here is we say, okay, um, well, we know that the text property exists, but what about the Adobe text document? So what does that mean? That means um, this item right here, so source text. So um, yeah, pretty much if this exists and this exists, then we can actually change something, right? Like if one or the other does not exist, we, there's nothing to change, so we can't do it. So this, these two sections are both saying like, is there actually text that we can change? If there is not text that we can change, then continue on to the next layer. Okay, so now that we've done all of our like safety checks, we can actually change something. So here we go. If the current layer, if its name is equal to replace text layer name. So we set that up here. So if this name, asterisk replace me equals whatever we set this to be, asterisk replace me, then do something. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna change text properties. And inside of that, we're gonna change the Adobe text document. So that's this, this value right here. And we're gonna set that value to be something else. So we can do whatever we want here. But currently we have it set to a variable, which is up at the top, new text. Okay, awesome. So we've successfully gone through and changed our text layer. You can see that if there were multiple text layers here with the same name, it would all be updated. So now we know how to loop through and change within a single composition, but how about for the entire project? So that's why we put this into a function like we have, because now we can run all this code just by copy pasting this one line of text and running it over and over again. So what I've done is I've created another function and that's called search and replace text in project. Pretty obvious what that does, right? So here we have another for loop, but this time instead of looping through the layers in our composition, we're looping through all of the items in After Effects. So that includes compositions, folders, footage, etc. So it goes to the first item and it says, uh, let's set the first item to the variable name current item. And next it says if the current item is a composition and in coding terms it's if current item instance comp item. So kind of jargon, right? But if the current item is a composition, then do something. So what are we gonna do? 
with the current item? Well, first, we know that it's a composition because we just asked it. And because it's a composition, let's go ahead and name it my comp. So my comp equals this current item. So let's actually just make this code a little cleaner here. My comp equals current item. Um, because we know that the current item is a comp. Okay, next, what do we want to do with that? Well, we want to search that composition and replace the text. So um, before up here, we were manually setting the composition to be our whatever composition was open. But down here, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to have the code change that value. So it'll go to item one, say, is this a composition? If it is, change its contents. Is this one a composition? It is, change the contents. Is this one? It's not, don't do anything. So super simple to make it work on the entire project. I'll go ahead and call this function by copying the name as well as the parentheses. So uh, again, you can comment things out and that means that it will not actually run in the code by holding command and question mark. All right, now I'm gonna paste, um, oh, I forgot to mention, if the command question mark doesn't work, uh, you probably need to set your language to JavaScript here. And uh, otherwise, it might not know how to comment out your code. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so I have created my functions. I need to actually run it, so I'll paste it here, paste the name, and command shift P to run in After Effects, and all of our text has changed. So pretty straightforward. One thing that you'll realize is if I hit undo, it hasn't actually been undone. And the reason why I have to click it several times is because every time that this function was called, that was like one action. So now if it was done on 100 compositions, I need to undo a hundred times. So one way to work around this is to add more magic words. Um, and in this case, it's app dot begin undo group. Um, and then you open close parentheses and then you open close quotes and then you name whatever you want. This, this could be anything, but, uh, and then at the end of your for loop, you can then put app dot end undo group open close parentheses. And now, even if this for loop does a thousand things, you can hit undo once and it will undo all of those things. So, let's give it a shot. There we go. You can see that it did a bunch of things, but just have to do one undo. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this was semi-useful. Um, I'll go ahead and expand all of the code here so that you can copy it if you want. And I'll also make it available on my website here, which is brettonbrander.wordpress.com. I'll just post it in the blog. And uh, yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Um, I know we wandered a little bit. Um, this was just a once through tutorial. So uh, yeah, for other resources on your After Effects scripting learnings, I encourage you to search YouTube for NT Productions. Um, he does some great YouTube tutorials. Um, and the Redefinery recently went offline, but it has been an excellent resource for me. They have lots of like useful scripts. I'm not sure what these ones are, but um, you could give them a try. And then again, searching for uh, the Extend Script Tools Guide and also the JavaScript Tools Guide. These are both useful resources where you can search for these, you know, kind of magic keywords. But uh, yeah, I realize that coding when you first start learning is a little bit daunting and sometimes doesn't make sense. I would just encourage you to, even if it doesn't make sense, um, if it works, then it's good enough for now. And as you continue to keep coding, it'll eventually become really familiar and it'll 
click and it, it'll under, like it'll make sense um, after a while. But I found that when I was learning, if I stressed too much about like fully 100% understanding something all the time, then it didn't really help me out in the long run. Sometimes just being okay with not understanding for a little bit is okay, I think, for coding. Um, oh, and the other thing um, that I should mention is I've actually made several scripts. So um, if you're interested, I have um, some cool tools. Keyfast is probably my most popular right now. Um, it does lots of cool stuff like easing keyframes is the basic one, but it has all of your basic like After Effects actions like sliding and trim path and stagger and um, like here I'll just show you real quick. So here there's like a button to slide up and it has easing by default. There's buttons to scale things. And you can see it's applying on like a bunch of layers at once and buttons to stagger things. So you can get results like this super easily. Um, Keyfast does a lot of things. I find it really useful. Um, some of my other tools, um, this one makes burst animations. This one uploads directly to Instagram from After Effects. Um, this one helps you with like mouse animations. So, um, and I have some more coming out soon. But yeah, um, so I don't know. I learned just like you did. And it's really fun once I was able to make a product that I could, you know, give away or distribute or sell. That's always super fun. So uh, if you enjoy it, I recommend to keep at it. It'll get easier. If you don't enjoy it, um, I don't know. I guess don't force yourself. <laughs> but all right, uh, we'll see you in the next video.